record this on the computer. And I'm also going to go right now to Facebook Live. Give me a second there. Hopefully it gives us a minute to do this. This food's making me hungry. Well, not the fake food, hopefully. <laughs> All right, we got about another almost two minutes and we'll be live. Okay, oh, perfect. Okay. That's a good timing. All right, everybody, we are live now. Thank you for joining us today. <clears throat> we'll be on shortly. Uh, please share this video and all the videos to take back your health shows. It's available on voiceamerica.com, um, health and wellness channel, take back your health, or you can go to sanjevani.net, S-A-N-J-E-V-A-N-I.net, and you can also, um, have a link there and we have all the episodes archived as well so you can listen on demand or you can um pull up the archives pull up the archives now let me go back here so thanks for going today we're going to be talking about food deception part two if you missed the first one please go and listen to that because it was amazing information that we were talking about actually shocking information probably one of the most popular episodes that we've done and uh, we want to make sure that everybody listens today because there's going to be even more information that will be displayed and discussed. All right, less than 30 seconds and we're live. Okay. All right, again, everybody, thank you for joining us. It is a wonderful day. We're going to talk about foodborne illnesses. We're going to talk about food deception. Super important. If you eat food outside, you go to a grocery store. This show is going to be important because it's, a, it's going to be the continuation of even more of the food deception that happens every day in the United States and globally. So stay tuned. Welcome to Take Back Your Health. Your hosts are Dr. Sunil Pai and Maureen Sutton who will explain the shocking truths about health care, prescription drugs, food and supplement industries. They will help guide you to take back your power and feel great again. Now, here's Dr. Sunil Pai and Maureen Sutton. Welcome, everybody. This is Dr. Sunil Pai. Thank you for joining us today. Today is going to be a wonderful show. It is part two of Food Deception, The Dangers Continue. If you missed out on last week's episode, I highly recommend that you go back and listen to it. We covered everything from prion diseases, which is mad cow disease, more common than you think. We talked about a lot of foods in the industry, even some documentary films. We wanna continue on from that discussion today and extrapolate a little bit more deeper on the issue of foodborne illness, how common it is, and the food deceptions in the food and restaurant industry. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Today we were talking about foodborne illness. And so last week we were talking about, you know, one in four Americans get sick every year from foodborne illnesses. That's about 75 million people every year get sick from eating food in the United States. Now we think we're supposed to have a USDA and FDA and, and health regulations inspections, but the system is ahead of us and we're lacking behind in quality and safety assurance. And so today we're going to talk about uh, many things that even for us during the research was quite shocking because some of these things were on our plate or could be on our plate every day. It's definitely going to be in your grocery uh, store. It's going to be in your restaurant and maybe at lunch or dinner or breakfast being served to you. So we want you to be healthy and be smart at what you're eating and being more of an educated, empowered consumer. So let's start off with some uh, infections. I know we were talking last time about eggs. We'll talk a little bit about eggs, but salmonella. So let's talk a little bit about salmonella, Maureen. Can you tell the listeners a little bit about what salmonella poisoning is? And then we'll end up with E. coli as well. Well, salmonella recently was found in romaine lettuce, and uh, which is really strange. How does salmonella end up in your romaine lettuce? What is salmonella? Salmonella is a bacteria that's actually in humans and animals. Uh, and animals excrete it through their feces, 
and end up contaminating the water supply. So if you think about where animals are being processed, um, they usually have these big giant pools of blood and urine and feces, and they keep them outside. They're usually covered, but they keep them outside. And, and then they'll spray all that on the surrounding fields. Now that uh, stuff <laughs> can wind up in the water table, or if it rains, the runoff goes downstream into the farmer's field of spinach or romaine lettuce. And um, so one of the things about salmonella is there's many different strains of it. The worst of it um, can end up uh, typhoid. So people get very sick. You get abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea, vomiting. Usually takes 12 to 72 hours to develop the salmonella. So then you've got to trace back that far to figure out what you've eaten that was contaminated. And you're usually normally sick four to seven days with salmonella. About a million people have or become ill every year with salmonella, and about 19,000 of them are hospitalized. Well, that's a lot of numbers there. And then when we look at actually like things like E. coli, because that's the next kind of infection that people hear about E. coli on the spinach, on the tomatoes, on the peppers, you know, every year there's some kind of outbreak, quote unquote. But what we want to remind everybody who's listening today is that E. coli and salmonella, all these kind of foodborne illnesses, they do not come from a vegetable or a fruit or a legume or a plant by themselves. What are, these are bacteria that come from the inside of a human or more importantly, an inside of an animal. And so usually these farms that are contaminated are, are downstream, as we'll say, from a factory farm. The industry never wants to tell this to people because people then would wonder, why is my food being contaminated by some other, other person's food? So they'll say, there's a scare, E. coli, you know, don't buy this romaine lettuce or don't buy this spinach or don't buy the tomatoes this season. And they have this massive recall and they throw away all this food. But people have got to remember, it's not coming from the vegetables itself. It's coming from the above factory farming. So this is why we're so, uh, you know, in, in protest of factory farming, because what it does, the danger to the environment, what it does, the danger to the other farmers who are doing wonderful, good things. You can have organic foods and still get contamination. And so this is why now, unfortunately, when you go to the store, everything's triple washed and everything has to be, you know, pay a little bit more. And the reason is now we have to, because the idea is that if there is this bacteria that's coming from the inside of an animal gut from a factory farm, uh, processing plant or slaughterhouse, we call it, uh, coming into our food, then we're going to get sick. And again, E. coli, you know, carrying on from the salmonella, E. coli, there's a, there's a specific strain which many people have heard about, the 015787, 7, which is the very dangerous type that can cause bloody diarrhea and people can die. You know, people think of uh, uncooked hamburgers usually on the 4th of July coming up soon. You know, we'll always have cases of this where, you know, the contaminated meat. So this is coming from, uh, you know, factory farm food. Um, not cooked very well, and the bacteria that's coming in from this processing plants and factory farming, actually, we consume it, we get sick, and many people, unfortunately, will die because it's a very severe, especially with, with younger children and elderly patients. They become very dehydrated. Uh, they can get sick very quickly. Uh, they have to be hospitalized and t you know, given antibiotics. Usually, it's too late by the time people are, you know, who are camping on 4th of July or somewhere else, they actually get to medical care. It's, it's too much. Also important is for those patients who are undergoing chemotherapy or cancer, Cancer treatments, their immune system is down, their gut microbiome is also at risk. So avoiding I know, animal proteins in general is key, especially uh, for all health. But more importantly, if you are if you are if you are a cancer patient or have any kind of immune compromise or gut compromise, which most people do on have on some level, uh, it, one more one more reason to avoid these foods. And you know, usually if you end up in the you know emergency room and they'll tell you, oh, you have gastroenteritis. Well, possibly you actually have E. coli. So one of the things to remember is if the vegetables have been contaminated with E. coli or salmonella, it's usually those vegetables that are sold in those plastic packs because that allows the fruit or vegetables, usually a vegetable, to kind of incubate inside that plastic container and then uh, it incubates the the bacteria 
So try to buy fresh, organic foods. And you still have to wash it. Remember, everything comes from a truck. Everything comes from, a, you know, everybody's touching it it's on the floors from the farm. So make sure that, you know, everything is always washed. You don't have to use kind of sterilizing agents. You don't want to kill your food, but you want to just make sure that you wash it uh, very thoroughly like you should do with everything that you bring into the house for, uh, appropriately with food and then make sure that you store it appropriately as well. You know, what we always recommend with all our patients is eating a whole foods plant-based diet, eating more organic, non-GMO, you know, keeping your inflammation down with Bosmeric SR and importantly, keeping your immune system strong. And we recommend what I take every day, what we give for our patients is Glucan 300. Go to purebetaglucan.com. That's P-U-R-E, beta, B-E-T-A, glucan, G-L-U, can.com and learn more of what we recommend the clinically tested safe natural uh, supplement for keeping your immune system strong and that's uh, probably the most important thing that you can do for yourself is to keep your immune system very strong so that these things are mild or if you're working with um, some sort of disease and you're taking medication or you're taking supplements things that are natural you're helping your body on its way to healing Right. And we always want to keep it strong. So, you know, it's not just uh, avoiding these things is that you know, there is exposures, exposure risk. And so the idea is that keeping your system stronger, you know, taking healthy probiotics. We have those here at sendgemonystore.com. You can get uh, a whole bunch of different information on that. We had a whole show on the gut microbiome. Go back and listen to some of those links of what we recommend there. Now, we, know how many people get sick with E. coli every year? How many? 1.2 million. Wow. And 23,000 of them need hospitalization. So again, you know, this, it's, this is kind of like common numbers, like over a million people, about, you know, 20,000 of, you know, depending on each infection, end up going to the hospital. And that's a lot of healthcare expenditure just on food. We're not talking about people getting sick otherwise than just having a hamburger or a salad uh, on the 4th of July or something like that. So again, everybody, please look at this. Now, last week we started and we ended with some fish. Right? We were talking about you know, fishy foods. And so let's talk about lobster. You know, when I was a resident, I used to go, there's a place across the street from the hospital. I was on call and I used to get these lobster burritos. It was really delicious, by the way. But, you know, for less than six bucks, for, it seemed like a pound burrito of lobster. I just could never figure out how they got it so cheap. I just thought I was lucky. You know, but now we understand that lobster, you know, very interesting, about one third of restaurants, according to a study that was published looking at DNA and 28 restaurants across the country, major seafood restaurants, you know, in that, you know, 35 percent of the samples uh, did show that it was not lobster. They were actually giving uh, substitutes, which they're called langostinas, which are like little hermit kind of crab looking, they call them the little lobsters, the less expensive, but they're not the real, what we call Alaskan king, you know, the, the, sorry, the, 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 the big um, lobsters that people usually pay a lot of money for. So lobster is one thing. And also you also see the lobster meat, right, Maureen? And, and what is a lobster meat made out of? What do you mean? The, so, oh, no, you, that's the crab meat. The, yeah, sorry, the crab the, meat too. Crab same, meat? Same, the same thing with lobster meat because it comes in sandwiches like in burritos. and. Okay, salads. so this is interesting. It, the crab meat in particular is made out of something called surimi paste, and then it's mixed with egg whites and starch. So we were talking earlier about how, you know, you're allergic to eggs, you're out to dinner, you're eating uh, crab meat, in a sushi California roll or something, and uh, you end up with an allergy reaction. Yeah, we have a lot of patients that when we test, they come back negative, say, for, for the seafood. They have a positive, you know, egg allergy is very, very common. And then they go, I went out, I had some seafood, and I had a reaction. I had, you know, GI, I have inflammation, headache, et cetera, gut issues. And we couldn't figure it out. But now we understand that, now, you know, another study came out showing that, um, you know, red snapper, it's almost 90 something percent was 94 percent is mislabeled, meaning wow. so if they did the DNA testing again, the lobster and even scallops, scallops, oh. have, scallops have been shown to actually be actually raise uh, skate. And sometimes some of them may even be shark and they use cookie cutters to actually just make it look like a scallop. So these are things that when most people think that are very expensive, you know, are, are troubling. So. And there's uh, calamari is often made out of pork bone. 
Yeah, well, we'll talk about that on, on a follow-up <laughs> after this short commercial break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about fish. We're going to talk about Kobe beef, Parmesan cheese. We're going to talk about um, wonderful things that you would think about like truffles and wasabi. Uh, we're going to get into some of the mystery meats, even the fine wines. So uh, stay, stay tuned. Uh, please thank our sponsors for allowing us to have the show, and we'll come back with more of Food Deception Part 2. You're clear. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching here on Facebook Live. Uh, we were just talking about fish. We're going to come back and talk more about fish, but we have a lot of topics because a lot of people, uh, even ourselves, we're going to talk about spices too. So we'll talk about the spices in the third segment. I, I, I want to just get the food, the main food things done first. Um, but wow, you know, lobster. I used to think all the time, you know, and you know, when people go to like a generic restaurant, uh, you know, all you can eat lobster you know, and shrimp, you have to understand how is it seven ninety nine, Right. And, and, and where does the lobster have to come from? Right. A lot of the lobster comes from Australia. When I lived in Australia, I remember they were loading the planes. I worked at the airport and uh, they were loading the planes with these giant tanks of live lobster and sending them to Japan and the U.S., and so, you know, lobster should be really expensive when it's all you can eat. There's what's going on with that? I mean, we have lobster tacos, lobster burritos. We have, you know, lobster and even in the sushi, you know, and again, all you can eat sushi. So you have to see like, well, where are we, you know, follow the money, as I always say. Yeah. How is, how is it so cheap? You know, I remember as a kid and we used to go to restaurants and I, we used to look at the other table and the family would be eating a, a, a lobster and we'd be like, wow, it's a special occasion. Someone's birthday was like, they must be very important people. It's so expensive because they were eating, you know, the most expensive food at the time was seafood. And now it's like lobster fests. Uh, you can go to restaurants and just, you know, just unlimited what you can eat. Uh, for a certain price, like maybe 10, 12 bucks. And that doesn't make any sense when it needs to be maybe 10 or $12 just for the tail. So if you're going to eat lobsters, make sure you're in a restaurant that has a tank, those poor little things, and you pick your lobster to be cooked. I, I think people should just avoid lobster altogether. It's really uh, sad. Go, go plant-based. Don't be cruel. Um, I, I would, you know, anyways. So um, when we went, come back to it. So when we come back, let's talk about this cost price, and then we'll get into this fish aspect because I want to talk a little bit more about that. Thanks, everybody, here on Facebook Live. Please like us on sanjevani.net, S-A-N-J-E-V-A-N-I.net. Uh, take a look. You are tuned in to Take Back Your Health. To reach our program today, call 1-866-472-5792. That's 1-866-472-5792. Or by email to radio at sanjevani.net. That's radio at sanjevani.net. Now, let's return to Take Back Your Health. All right, everybody. We were talking about fish before we left the food deception in the industry. And, you know, we're looking at, you know, uh, one of these major offenders in the fish industries. We're looking at mislabeling. You know, this even comes from the supplier. It's not just even the store itself. It, the, the deception starts even from the fisher men supplying it to the, you know, the, the distributor, distributor selling it to the, the health food restaurant or the, or the restaurant directly. Um, toothfish has been uh, substituted for Chilean sea bass. So a lot of people go, oh, I want to get you know, this expensive Chilean sea bass. It's actually toothfish. Escolar uh, as white tuna. Threadfin uh, slickhead as Alaskan cod. And uh, Yeah, slickhead. I like that name. Don't even know what it looks like. If I Google it, it'll probably be. <laughs> but a study conducted in 2010 and, uh, uh, and 2012 from the Ocean Conservation, uh, Ocean Conservation Organization Oceana found that every single sushi restaurant that they studied and tested in New York City at that time had mislabeled fish. So if this happens in the city that has, you know, the best quote unquote seafood uh, in the United States, you know, fresh flown in and the, you know, the best artisans, craftsmen that are making Japanese food and sushi, what happens in the rest of America when it's just any town buffet uh, or any town America, all you can eat. Um, so it's just very, very concerning. Escalar. Yeah, the Escalar has but, actually been banned in Japan and Italy, but we still use it here, and it could be 
you know, used instead of tuna. And what's the problem with that? It contains histamines that can cause disturbing side effects, diarrhea. Yeah. So again, uh, one more reason just to look at uh, in my book, An Inflammation Nation, you can go to aninflammationnation.com and get a signed copy. I actually cover all the data here on the mislabeling of fish, but this is all up to date new information. Now, what do people eat with their, usually their sushi is wasabi. And now a study came out, you know, um, that was actually written up in the Washington Post about 99% of all wasabi sold in the United States is fake. So what that is, is that it's basically a mixture of horseradish, hot mustard, and some green dye. Which really isn't that bad, but you think you're eating something exotic called wasabi and it's horseradish. And wasabi is really expensive because for $160 a kilogram at a wholesale price. Right. And the interesting thing is, so it's a part of the plant, it's grated, and you pulverize it to make the spicy taste. Okay, it has, it has a more complex taste than what we usually get. And it needs to be eaten immediately within 15 minutes of when it's, when it's processed because it loses its signature flavor. Now, every time I used to go, when I used to go eat sushi and fish, you know, it was sitting there on the bar for I don't know how long or in the little plastic container that we took to go. It could have been there for days because it's not real stuff. So even, so now we have fake fish and we have the fake wasabi. So again, everybody, you know, again, even in New York, fake fish, fake wasabi. We definitely want to, we want to start looking at getting better. I remember when I was in Japan, I used to take tours to Japan and, you know, first timers going to Japan and eating sushi. And the, the first time they saw wasabi, they thought it was guacamole. Wow. <laughs> and they take it with their chopsticks and put it in their mouth and whew. <laughs> yeah, that, that would not be a good thing to do. I, w- I do not recommend anybody at home doing that. I think but, that's a common mistake, actually. Yeah. So, so the, next, the next food item, food deception, is, you know, this, this, this thing called Kobe beef, right? We've heard about it. It's been a big craze in the last, like, five, ten years, but particularly in the, you know, these, these um, restaurants that you see, these chain restaurants now, all the burger places, Kobe beef, Kobe steaks, uh, et cetera. Um, interesting thing here, Kobe beef costs more than $20 per ounce. Wow. Okay. Now, there's only eight restaurants in the entire United States that actually serve real Kobe beef. Eight. Hmm. And I could probably Google right now, there's going to be a thousand different restaurants or offering Kobe beef, Kobe steak, Kobe, Kobe sliders, all these kind of things like that. Um, nope. Fake beef. Fake food. Okay, so we have to be careful what they're doing. They're just selling you just lower grade, regular uh, processed meats. You better tell people what Kobe beef is. Uh, Go ahead. People have never had it. Well, they shouldn't. But uh, anyways, it's uh, where they take the cow, unfortunately, and they massage it and they treat it nicely. They're supposed to tenderize it and make it softer and all this stuff. I don't know. I, I think it's still inhumane to be using these kind of things like that. People say it's a softer, just kind of like a veal kind of concept of beef, right? It's like, how do we make it softer and all this stuff like that? So they pay more because it's a higher cost to um, grow the animal. But unfortunately, most people that are going to get a six ninety five or ten ninety five Kobe beef burger at the hotel tonight at the conference that they're at or traveling on, you know, with their family having a meal, um, unlikely that it is. It's just cheap meat. Now, we all go to two um, seafood restaurants. We all go to Italian restaurants, and we all have pasta. And what is the thing that most people, except for us who are plant-based, who, what they put on pasta is Parmesan cheese. Now, Parmesan cheese has been shown to actually contain – so when they say it's interesting, Bloomberg News actually did a report in February showing that store-bought grated cheeses that say, quote-unquote, 100% grated Parmesan cheese have been tested to contain – anti-clumping additives made out of wood pulp. So it's a, it's a wood pulp um, additive that kind of clumps it. So that's when they shave it, you know, kind of has this dryness, kind of powdery aspect. But since it's already graded, it's already been kind of made there artificially. So again, you know, it's again a fake cheese. Yeah, well, I guess the cheese... The- cheese itself is some form of cellulose and yeah. I, 
you know, cellulose is okay to use as an additive, but if they use more of it, higher levels of it, then you're getting a lot of wood pulp thinking that it's Parmesan cheese. Yeah. I mean, it tastes nice. You could hardly tell, right? Yeah, because they have flavors and colors and chemicals. But that is, you know, you go to the store and you get these big old, like, these canisters and says whole, you know, 100% grated Parmesan cheese. But when you actually buy a real Parmesan cheese, it's expensive. Or when you go to the restaurant, they actually grate it in front of you and, and very little. Like they don't let, you know, they actually stop. They don't say, let us keep going until you stop. They just do a little bit and they walk away if it's a real restaurant because it's a very expensive type of cheese. Again, just try to avoid these things at all costs. You know, a natural way to actually to, for those people who crave Parmesan cheese or sprinkling that kind of, you know, that dried cheese powder uh, on your food, is just try some uh, nutritional yeast. Get some oh, organic. I was just going to say that. Yeah, it some has, organic nutritional it yeast. It glucan in it. It has some glucan in it. It has, it has actually uh, B vitamins. So for, for all the people who are plant-based or non-plant-based, getting extra B vitamins, it is a great way to get um, some flavor. It has a cheese-like flavor. You can add it to your pastas. Uh, for those people who want to wean their kids off of cheese on all their pasta dishes, just just sprinkle nutritional yeast. You can even make, you know, uh, a vegan mac and cheese with this. And there's a lot of recipes on the internet that you can look for um, to help them have their cheesiness without the casein, without the insulin growth factor, without the hormones, antibiotics, all these wonderful and horrible things. Now wood pulp. And now, now wood pulp, right? <laughs> I just think of a wood chipper for some reason. It's just a weird thing. Oh, when you wood, wood no, pulp. don't and go I think of Fargo, and I'm thinking that's not a good thing. All right, so another fancy thing that you see at restaurants since we're talking about Italian food is truffles. And this is one of my favorite things because I used to go to, I go to this pizza place all the time and they just always have, you know, this mushroom pizza. We get yeah, it without the cheese. Pizza, and, they, the they, and, they, and they add like this option of truffle oil. That was like a dollar maybe $2, maybe something for a little oil. And Maureen's like, that's so fake. And so I looked it up and yes, it is fake. In fact, most truffle oil is fake. You know, real truffle oil actually costs anywhere for an ounce of the actual real truffle is about $30 up to $100 of really good fine grade truffles, which are the mushrooms, right? And so when we get it in, a, you know, like an ounce at the store for a dollar, you know, it's just basically truffle flavored oil. So be careful about uh, truffle oil. That's something. And then what we else do we have? Oil. How about olive oil? Well, olive. I think we've um, we covered that. have seen, you know, the documentaries recently about uh, the mafia buying into the olive oil industry and diluting it with soybean oil or some other type of vegetable oil. So, and they make it look really good, so it's hard to tell. Yeah, they put chlorophyll. They put all the different nice. kind of natural green agents, and, you know, it makes it look green. Um, but, you know, when you look at organic, Bottles. you yeah. know, cold-pressed virgin olive oil, it's super cheap almost everywhere, even a big old gallon of it. And it used to be really expensive a long time ago. Um, so, yeah, what else do we – what are the kind of oils and stuff? Well, what do you put with oil is you put balsamic vinegar. All right. Well, and then interesting thing. So they've shown that most of the balsamic vinegar, when they say Modena, I think if that's the way you're more for, you have the Italian background more than I do. Mm -hmm. um, that's the city that's known for this balsamic. So they kind of market it. So they, it, it, they say it's, it's, you know, made in uh, Modena, Italy. Uh, it's actually very diluted and real high end um, balsamic oil must have in the ingredient grape must grape must okay and that's that's a, that's part so when you say uh an, an, an original traditional balsamic vinegar it should have the grape must in the ingredient it's guaranteeing that the vinegar has been aged at least 12 years okay and it also should say aceto balsamico tradicionale Honest. I was just going to say the same thing, but you said it much better than me. So yes, avoid um, sugars and caramel coloring at all costs. This is another way that you know you can go to the store and say, "Oh my God, here's my olive oil and here's my balsamic vinaigrette," and then it's super cheap, like maybe like one or two, three dollars. It's going to be more and more expensive. So you have oh, to be careful. I, I wanted to talk about the olive oil just a little bit more sure. too. Uh, f you know, there was a case in 1981 in Spain where 20,000 people consumed so-called olive oil, and it actually turned out to be rapeseed oil, which is... GMO canola oil. Right. And that particular oil contains a poisonous toxin called aniline in it. So 20,000 people got sick from consuming what they thought was olive oil. 
All right. So after we come back from the short break, we're going to start covering some of the spices and other foods that you get at restaurants and in your kitchen. We'll be right back. Clear. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening here at Facebook Live. Please share this video and all our videos. If you go to sangevani.net, you can actually S-A-N-J-E-V-A-N-I.net. We will have a link to all the previous episodes starting in January, um, and you can just listen on demand. Also, you can... Um, I can't see any of the comments. Can you click on it so we can follow comments and say hello to all of our friends listening? Yes, Lovey Malsh and uh, Lee. Hopefully, we all see you pretty Hi. soon. Yeah, I can't wait to this see medicine you. retreat. Um, yes, yeah, so um, go to sendgemini.net. Also, you can go to voiceamerica.com and um, everything's on demand. Go to the Health and Wellness Channel, go to Take Back Your Health, and uh, listen. You can go back to January. There's a little um, box of a uh, table of contents. Go back and listen to each and every episode. If you go to our website, sendgevany.net, you can actually watch us, the video, and watch the interviews. If you want to just listen to it on iTunes, it's free. There's a Voice America app you can get at the app stores. Um, and you can listen on demand when you're working out, when you're at work, bored, if you're exercising, uh, if you just need some more information, you're tired of watching social media or the news, the fake I'm news, a treadmill. you can learn about fake foods. Well, and this is a wonderful thing to share with your friends. If you go regularly out to your friend's place for dinner, you share dinners, you know, I'll have dinner at your place, you'll have dinner at mine. You want to make sure that your friends are serving the right ingredients so you're not getting fake food. So this is important. Sunil. Yes. <laughs> I'm here. I'm just preparing and getting some other things for what other foods we're going to start talking about in the next episode. Thank just, you, everyone, for watching. Please, again, if you have any comments, please share them on Facebook. And also, um, please um, share with as many people because we're trying to get a worldwide audience. I'm trying to get to 100,000. That's my goal. And we're slowly creeping up there. And even more important than that, we want you all to be healthy. We want you to know the pitfalls that the food industry has put before us and be able to be a discerning shopper. Taking and back your health. Consumer. You are tuned in to Take Back Your Health. To reach our program today, call 1-866-472-5792. That's 1-866-472-5792. Or by email to radio at sanjevani.net. That's radio at sanjevani.net. Now, let's return to Take Back Your Health. All right, everybody. We were talking about food deception. This is part two of the continuation from last week. Last week, we were talking about a lot of serious issues. We covered like fish industries, dairy industries, poultry industries. We're going to cover some of that today, but we want to continue on where we were with the top 15 most common fake foods. You know, some of this was posted on an article by bewell.buzz. Uh, um, Dot com and also on Bon Appetit, there was a, a posting of as well. So uh, for those who want to learn more, go to those websites or uh, those news media. Also, you can read my book. I cover a lot of this information as well. Now, spices. So we all look at food as medicine. You know, we always talk about healing spices. Um, and one of our favorite things that we use every day in, in our morning coffee and at nighttime we make as a wonderful tea is saffron. Right? Saffron is... Well, we used to think, interesting enough, we used to have saffron in our house, and uh, we used to make saffron in our food. You know, we, saffron comes from uh, you know, India, Middle East, and Spain. Um, Mexico it's, also. I'm and Mexico, and there's a kind of Spanish saffron. It's a Spain saffron. So we always, what we get here at the store, you get a little vial, and it has a few little strands, like these little reddish-orange strands. It's really expensive, maybe like five, ten bucks for a few strands. And so most people, like, they have a, a saffron, they put it on desserts. It's a very sweet, aromatic uh, spice um, and it's flavorful. It covers colors things very orange and yellowish um, and delicious. Usually when you see the strands, they're like a bright orange and maybe a little bit of yellow on them. Here. Right. Right. And so one thing to know is that you know, we just recently, last November, we had the opportunity to go to Dubai. 
Uh, we were at a health conference. We were invited to go. It was the Ayurvedic Yoga Yunani Siddha Homeopathy Conference. 3,000 doctors came from India, and Marie and I were invited to go, which was a really honor for us to be there. And we were able to go to the spice market, the actual traditional spice market, where they just had like sacks of the stuff, like saffron and cardamom and, 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 and frankincense, and you, know, you name it. it. Just We took wonderful pictures. We'll probably post them on Facebook sometime. Just an amazing, just kind of what you think back going you know, centuries ago, in traveling in the spice market, even going back to the Magi, trading spices, right? You know, all these wonderful things. But we and, had a real wake-up call in the spice market. Yeah. One thing I noticed is that all of the spices in the spice market had probably been there for a long time, and they were just selling those things to the tourists. But we were called into one of the shops where they had real saffron, and we got an education on saffron, which was excellent. Yeah, they actually have different grades of saffron. And what it is is that if you think of the little flower, there's these little stamens, those little twiggy parts in the center of it. And there's two main ones, a male and a female. And then there's like a small bunch of smaller stamens around that. So what happens is these are hand-picked. That's why saffron is so expensive. It can be up to about $2,000 for a pound. It's, what, it's the most expensive spice in the world. Okay, and if you get the right quality, it's actually more expensive than the, the drugs that are being sold uh, illegally in the world. And so the two main uh, stamen parts of this plant, that, that, that actually stays there in the Middle East. And the rest of the other parts of this, you know, the, uh, we call them the, the normal ones or the, the not so the potent ones, not so strong ones, they get exported out to the United States. And, and that's, sorry, it's not the stamen, it's sorry. the stigma. Stigma, sorry. Again, my, my botany is a little bit lacking today. There you go. So, so one of the things that we see is so when people go, you know, most of us here, when we go to the health store or an, you know, an Asian store, we usually see the saffron comes in a little cap, uh, little box, and it's expensive. And it's like an orangish yellow color. That's what we all have perceived saffron to be, you know, this orange yellow color. And now what they're, they're showing is that it's actually a lot of the fake saffron is just dried um, onions, shaven. Right. Okay, and uh, they actually put some orange dye to that. So it takes 150 flowers to make a single gram, a single gram of saffron. That's why it's so expensive, right? So there's all these uh, people in the fields picking one by one and putting them in a basket and all this stuff like that. And yet it only takes one onion and some orange dye to make a whole bunch that goes on clearance at the health store when we see like, oh, saffron's on sale. So... Well what it should look like, it should be a really deep, dark red, almost like dried blood color. Yeah. And it actually, when you, then when you crush it and you, you know, we, we make a saffron tea at night when we use a mortar and pestle, then it becomes like a deep red lipsticky kind of powder. And then, you know, um, when you put, uh, say like a, some alternative milk beverage, uh, making it into a tea, it turns into this orange color. But when you see it in the store, it's already an orange color strand. That's usually fake. <laughs> now the benefits of saffron is anti a lot of anti-cancer benefits anti-inflammatory benefits you can read that in my book also there's a great book called healing spices by dr agawal you can get that on amazon he covers all these things he's a former researcher at md anderson who's wonderful for the reproductive system right great. and Amen. good for good for mood so there's even a supplement now that are trying to extract mm -hmm. some of the comp components for depression and uh, mood disorders now what else do we put with saffron a lot of times when we make dessert is vanilla Right. And vanilla extract, you know, you see vanilla extract everywhere you go. You know, even when we travel in Mexico, there's always these, uh, these stores that say real vanilla extract, no fake, no, you know, not adulterated. And I used to never understand that. But explain to you what is happening here with the vanilla. Well, I guess, <clears throat> excuse me. I guess there's an imitation vanilla, which is made from vanillin, which is an organic compound that <clears throat> does not occur naturally in vanilla. It's actually synthesized in a lab. And um, one of the ways that you can distinguish real vanilla is it contains a, a chemical called 4-hydroxybenzaldehyde. <laughs> I kind of butchered that one. <laughs> Maybe right. you, you can say that. That's fine. That's fine. But you'll never know that unless, you know, you have a, a lab available for you. But that particular component is a bacterial side. So it protects you against uh, certain bacteria strains. Maybe you need it for E. coli or <laughs> one of those. And it's also an antioxidant. 
Yeah, so when a lot of people buy, like even these this kind of say the vanilla, it's similar to like the essential oils episode, go back and listen to the essential oils episode that we had with Chris Reed. You know, we started talking about how like lavender, then you have a lavendin. And so now you have a vanilla. These are things that are very similar, but they lack the actual health benefits. They're synthetic. And that's why you can get cheap vanilla extracts at the store again. You go to health stores. And, that, you know, one thing that I always recommend people, you know, there's one of these stores, there's all these now like health outlets that are like, um, stores that have like the off items um, and, and people think that, okay, I'm going to get the stuff that's on discount. Um, but usually they're blowout items. Those things you got to stay really far away from because we know for sure that when they're blowout items or they're mismatched and you're like, oh, I can get cheap olive oil or here's some vanilla extract and here's some saffron at these uh, store depot kind of places that you'll see around the country now everywhere. They're like a dollar store now for food. Also don't buy food at the dollar store as well. Then and they do that sometimes with essential oils too. They, they do that with That's a lot of things. You know, supplements and things that are getting ready to go off. You don't really want to buy those things on sale. So when, we're, when it's too cheap to be, you know, too good to be true as a price, then it's, it's not. <laughs> it's not it's, true. It's a little bit. You know, the next thing is we, we put uh, also with saffron and villa is we put cinnamon. And most of the cinnamon in the United States is actually cassia. It's not actually cinnamon itself. Cassia is grown in Vietnam and China. It's related to the Ceylon family. It's, it's considered real. Ceylon is the real cinnamon, okay? And cassia bark is hotter and more abrasive than the lighter aromatic Ceylon. And the sticks are fa fairly easy to tell apart. Ceylon um, quills are composed of many paper-thin rolled up. They kind of look like thin layers of brown paper. It's rolled up. That's what you want to look for when you buy real cinnamon. While the cassia type is a single sheet of bark. And now, what? The label will say either Ceylon or it'll say Zelanica. Right. No real cinnamon. And I always tell people to buy actually the real cinnamon in the sticks as it's curled up, then you know it's real. When it's, once it says ground cinnamon, and that's all they say on the label, ground cinnamon, they don't tell you what type, and it's usually going to be cassia. And I think they use coffee husks. They and do grind use grind it up to fool you. They do. So wow. again, again, more fillers that are being used to actually um, now remember. Think of how much cinnamon is used in America every day. Cinnamon rolls, cinnamon buns, cinnamon on the coffee at the at the local coffee shop, fast foods, uh, cinnamon cookies. I mean, there's cinnamon in everything, and uh, you know, and why is it so cheap now? Is because we're not actually giving you the real form of the high graded cinnamon. We're giving you, you know, like again, when you go to big box stores, you get this big old pound of cinnamon ground powder. When you, when you use, when you use um, spices, we always recommend organic. We try to get the source of origin on the package. And you want to buy the smallest portion of the amounts as possible because you want to use it. You want to grind it and use it because that's when all the volatile oils, all the health compounds is being active. If it's sitting there on a the shelf at the big box store and you get it on discount, it's already lost its benefits. It might be okay for just adding some smell to cookies, but you're missing the actual do uh, not buy this in the dollar store. Right. This, and and cinnamon is really good for lowering your cholesterol. Cinnamon is lowering for lowering blood sugar. They've actually extracted components and patented that. We have them in many of our glucose and lipid lowering products. Uh, but again, cinnamon every day in your food real. Also, what goes along with this is coffee then, right? We're talking about the, the coffee has been shown, ground coffee has been shown to be contaminated or adulterated with twigs, roasted corn, and also ground up toasted parchment paper. In the instant coffee? In the ground coffee. So the like when people coffee. buy these big tubs, it's already what? ground up. Remember, you're just putting it in the filter and you're just running it through. Um, all these things can have this like, how do we just fill up more space? The average person doesn't really have a palate to really distinguish fine coffee. Even when they go to some of these uh, coffee fast food chains, they think that they're getting this, this expensive um, fancy coffee. It's just more flavor, smells, uh, chemicals, and additives, and, and, and sugars that make it taste better. But yes, uh, roasted, ground up parchment paper. Imagine what they have in instant coffee. You have no idea what's in there. Yeah. So, <laughs> so again, you know, again, try to get whole, organic beans, fair trade, shade grown. Almost every store carries them now. Try to find the country of origin. I actually like country origin, single origin versus a blend. Blend just means they're picking up all the beans from wherever off the floor of the warehouse. And they say, okay, this is a city blend. This is a this blend. This is that blend. I like to get specific coffees uh, that are just origin. Then I know I'm supporting those people, fair trade, shade grown, organic. That's what you can get. And it's not more expensive. In fact, you know, organic a canister at, at, a, at a regular store could be maybe 
nine to 12 bucks, people are spending six bucks for a latte at the uh, local coffee fast food chains. You want to get fair trade, organic, whole beans, grind them yourself, make your own coffee. Put a little bit of cinnamon, put a little bit of organic turmeric, put a little bit of, of a cardamom powder, put a, uh, grind a little bit of real uh, saffron, and then you can put something like dandy blended, which is roasted chicory root and, um, and dandelion, and it's delicious. That's what we make in our coffee every and morning. Health drink first thing in the morning. Right. It makes it more alkaline. You have all the anti-inflammatories, all the flavonoids, all the uh, you know, health benefits. So this is how you make your morning Joe, uh, you know, morning Wonder Woman, morning Superman, really for you. Not just for caffeine, but really actually getting more of the polyphenols and antioxidants, how to make your food the medicine. That's what we're here for. Okay. After we come back from the short break, we're going to start talking about the last of our list. We're going to talk about wines. We're going to talk about juices. We're going to talk about mystery meats and more. Stay Ooh, tuned. We'll be right back. Black pepper. Oh, even Shocking. black pepper. <laughs> Shocking stuff. All right, you're clear. All right, everybody. Hope you're enjoying this episode. Uh, interesting thing, because you know a lot of people think that we were just gonna, you know, bag or uh, talk bad or expose, in my opinion, uh, the food industry and in talking about animal proteins. And yes, animal proteins are a large industry that does very, very bad things. But also, you know, even the vegetables, the spices, because these are industries. Remember, everybody's a marketer to trying to sell you something, particularly on the internet in a big box store. What do we got here? There you go. That's better. Oh, am I? All right. Stephen is saying, Stephanie, sorry. Stephanie is saying, hello, Maureen. So let's give a shout out to Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Thank you for watching. And yeah, we spent the weekend with Stephanie. Oh. Our special uh, summer solstice ceremony. It was very nice. She was a guest at our house. And we have a lot of people I want to just also thank. Uh, also, we'll thank on the air from Canada, from China, from Ireland, from Malta, from uh, Spain, from Curacao, from uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. I mean, there's all sorts of people listening from around the world, from France and from Italy. Uh, so I, I just want to, I want to say uh, thank you all for listening and tuning in. And again, please share these videos because this information, especially when it comes to foods and health, is, is applicable everywhere. And remember, you know, it's, it's not just things that are coming just from China. It was, everybody's looking at how we make things cheaper, especially with trade, uh, trade wars and tariffs. Now we're trying to make more margin because we're going to be making less margin. So we would say, and in my opinion, there's going to be more food deception in the near future because now everybody's going to be hit with a tariff going this way or that way. So the only way they can improve their margin is by falsifying and adding things to the food or making the food not really real. Right. When the mafia changes their business to olive oil, you know there's something, they're on to something, right? <laughs> right. And, and make sure I'm going to talk about the, uh, the, um, the, the meat again, the 2 to 14%. I don't think, I don't know if we talked about that last time. And then we'll talk about a little bit about uh, the milk. We can talk about mystery meat and wines and anything else that we're missing. Let's talk about that. Anybody has any questions or comments, please post it on Facebook. Uh, send us an email if you want us to ask any questions that next time we can answer on any of the future shows. Go to radio at sangevini.net and uh, we can bring it up when appropriate. Back right now. Okay. Um, your question and answer it for you. You are tuned in to Take Back Your Health. To reach our program today, call 1-866-472-5792. That's 1-866-472-5792. Or by email to radio at sanjevni.net. That's radio at sanjevani.net. Now, let's return to Take Back Your Health. Wow, what a show it's been. You know, I've learned so much. Hopefully, everybody who's listening, you have learned as well. Again, it's not to scare people. It's to make us understand why, you know, in 2018, so many people around the world globally are still sick, even though they're trying to eat healthy, even though we have health food stores or online delivery, and we have, you know, restaurants now that are claiming that they're higher end. You know, it's one thing that I want everybody and each listener to be is healthy and happy. That's our intention here at Take Back Your Health. And Maureen and I want the best for everyone to always feel good and feel good about what you're putting in your body. And so, you know, when you're 
looking at your family finances, you really want to be spending a large amount of money on your foods. Don't go to the dollar store and buy cheap foods that turn out to be fake foods and affect your health. Buy good, organic, real foods. You know, a lot of, you know, we, I think the study in my book, I have the data, but it's about 6% where the average uh, family in America spends on their food in terms of their income. And in most countries around the world, they're spending anywhere from 20 to 30%. Which That's means- interesting thing we so, so we we that. value the, you know they value the food they go to the fresh markets they go to the local uh, co-ops they go to the farmers markets you know it's everything is fresh smaller amounts and here we're just the opposite we go to the big box store and say i'm going to get 50 gallons of this at a discount and i'm going to store it in my 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 pantry forever because i got it on discount and it's just <laughs> like the seinfeld episode of where kramer just loads up with uh, with the beefaroni or whatever these are not really good things to do fresh small you know it's not inconvenient because what's inconvenient is having a heart attack having diabetes having cancer so really making the food the medicine is important now we talked about beef last time and i wanted to make something just real quick in my book i'm not sure if i remember if i talked about it last week but you know the annals of diagnostic pathology looked at the beef content in the food industry and wow. they took the type top eight fast food restaurants again and they looked at the meat content and what it showed is that the average meat content in the top eight fast food restaurants ranges between two and 14 percent so what that means again is that 86 to 98 percent of the all beef patty or ground beef in your taco for example is not meat so what is it so it's gmo corn gmo soy now it's soon to be gmo wheat and all the pink slime that you don't want to know about so again you know one thing is pink slime pink slime just google it but not again before you're eating (laughs) exactly you know one thing i want to make clear is that you know before we went plant-based you know you know marina was way healthier than i was for for most of her life for me i was a standard american diet person until 2009 when you know when you read my book my life had a a a game-changing experience that looked at i looked started looking at how food was really now um should be applied as medicine I was, I used to eat, there's a local restaurant, actually a local burger chain, won't name it for legal reasons, but I had a patient many years ago who was a rancher who'd supply the beef. And it was this this famous Angus beef burgers. Uh, We all go and use it here uh, locally because it's supposed to be better USDA grade. And I I probably eat thousands of these burgers growing up and it was a little bit more expensive and you want to support locals. So we say, hey, I'm eating this versus the other, you know, fast food chains. And when I had this guy come as a patient, I asked him, I said, hey, after the consult, because I'm trying to tell him to go plant-based as a rancher ironically. And ironically more, he says, I don't even eat that. And I go, what do you mean you don't eat? You supply the, 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 the cows to this, the industry. You, you're the ones with the Angus beef. And he's like, no, what we sell for, for ground beef is the worst type of cow meat or the worst uh, cow animal state of, of health. They have tumors, they have infections. That all goes to ground meat and that's up to the, the restaurant supplier to cook it at a certain temperature to kill that bacteria. And also he said, I want to get a piece of meat where I can actually see it and cut it so I don't have tumors or other aspects of defects in this animal because it's all factory farmed usually. And so I was really shocked because I'm like, this, I ate thousands of those burgers thinking it was better. And now uh-huh. I know that, again, even I myself even you know, was, mis- was mismarketed. And so you know, the ground beef is one thing. Now, when we see things at the health store or more importantly now at the uh, grocery markets, you know, there's, in my book we talk about this, but there's something that they use is they call like they use a nitrogen, okay, or carbon dioxide. Sorry. So uh, when I was in in the emergency room uh, working as resident, uh, we would see patients who'd come in here in New Mexico. We have a lot of um, these um, trailers, and they don't have the um, what do you call those smoke detectors or carbon monoxide detectors. Usually, batteries are now people don't replace them, right? And so the gas stove goes on, and then people will come unconscious to the emergency room uh, with carbon monoxide poisoning. And one of the things that is the classic diagnostic thing is that when we pull the blood from the patient, it has this deep, bright red when it comes in the tube. It's super, super bright. And you go, wow. And that, that's instant. We already know. The person's unconscious. is carbon monoxide poisoning. And so what they now do in the industry is they get this beef that's old. And what a lot of restaurants have been, uh, uh, what do you call it, grocery markets, have been found doing illegally. And there's videos on the internet, and there's, it's in all countries, by the way. And not just illegally. They do it as routine now. As routine. But they can yeah. take an, uh, a beef or, a, say, ground beef or ground, any kind of ground meat, turkey, this or that, and ground beef, ground bison, 
And if it's just going to its expiration date or past, they can take it in the back, take off that plastic wrap, and then they put, they spray it with this carbon dioxide carbon uh, dioxide or monoxide. Monoxide. And what, yeah, yeah, and what it does dioxide. is it makes the, the hemoglobin kind of bind. It makes it really, really bright red. So it makes it bright red, and then they rewrap it with cellophane and slap the label. And I think in my book I have the data, but it can carry the bacteria up to several months, okay, without being seen. So it looks like it's fresh. You know, we're always looking at meats for being it bright red. It's fresh, like the yolks being really yellow, and it's actually fake. Uh, but again, another reason why you want to be looking at just avoiding as much animal protein as possible. And on the last, you know, we have a few more minutes here. Um, eggs. Fake eggs. That's one thing that we've seen. Fake wow, eggs. I just saw that. Yeah. And, you know, they make fake shells out of calcium carbonate, the yolks and the whites. I mean, they even have it where they show in, in China now because it's a large production. And even in India, it's like you can barely tell the difference. You can crack it. You can actually make a fried egg. It looks like a fried egg. And it's completely... Gelatin. So it looks very real. Gelatin, all sorts of chemicals, all sorts of, you know, different things that we don't even want to know about. All the trouble to make a fake egg. Because, I, I would because, because when they have all you can eat buffet, you can have free <laughs> breakfasts when you stay at the hotels now, you know, continental mm -hmm. breakfast. Scrambled eggs are usually powdered eggs, which are fake eggs, right? And so you don't have to be in the military to have that exposure. You go to any school or cafeteria or college and, you know, that scrambled eggs in those containers are really fake. Hey, you know, I think we should. I think we should really talk about honey. Yeah. So, really quick, we have one minute left, but honey is usually diluted, and honey is usually corn syrup. Uh, it's mis mislabeled. We talked a little bit on the last episode, uh, but there's a lot of uh, exploitation on honey, real honey, organic, raw, and filtered. You know, about ten to fifteen dollars just for a uh, a small little jar, and now you can get these little bear honeys at the at the, again the big box store for like. They're the worst ones. Yeah, a fructose corn syrup. So again, everybody, I hope you found this show to be a, a enlightening, educational. Uh, again, we want to look at all the foods that you put on your plate. It should be real, should be organic, non-GMO. Try to eat as much plant-based. That's going to be best for your health, best for the best for the environment, best for the people in the environment and our planet. Uh, but if you do choose these other foods, make sure that you know the supplier. Make sure that you, you ask the stores. Try to find country of origin. Actually, try to look at it. We didn't even talk about fake rice, plastic rice. Yeah, we talked about that last time. We talked about plastic yeah. rice? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. So almost everything on the meal we talked about could be fake. Try to get real food, people. Stay healthy. And, um, and tell your friends and family about this stuff. Yeah. So again, when, when, when 4th of July comes around, everybody's bringing potluck uh, and things to the plate. Please um, be healthy and best of health. Keep your eyes on the fries. All right, you're clear. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening here on Facebook Live. We were trying to cover a lot of material. The show goes by so fast. Anybody here you can see here on Facebook you want to give a shout out to? Hi, Ula. <laughs> Ula. We'll be talking soon. We'll do an interview uh, with Ula. Ula has a great uh, also a, a, a radio program uh, for autism. And she's one of the wonderful autism moms out there who's pioneering the way with education. So Ula will be talking to you shortly. And, um, you know, a lot of things we talked about. I didn't even get to talk about juice. <laughs> so I mean, and we didn't talk about black pepper. I really wanted to talk about we black didn't, pepper. Didn't, so we didn't let me just say really quickly sure. that a lot of times the black pepper corns that you buy are not black pepper at all. They're papaya seeds. I was so shocked. I I would never even think of that. Yeah, so I, think that's I, I know I know that there's some articles coming saying that they were actually using black sand for just the the, the just the pepper that is put in the oh, little pepper, no. peppers things. So black sand that was coming out of China. That's why people were selling again in these um these big box stores like and they they get these salt and pepper shakers and all these things. It's just cheap. It's not even real pepper now. It's just a black sand. Also papaya seeds. We didn't even talk about um was juices because you know one thing a lot of people talk about is like pomegranate pomegranate juice pomegranate's a big one yeah. it's a big one because of you know all the palm fruit and the interesting aspects of cardiovascular blood sugar and anti-inflammatory benefits of pomegranates pomegranates is real expensive that's why when you buy the real pomegranate juice it's, it's, it's eight bucks or something for a little you know now they have like palm shots it's really expensive but uh, when you start seeing this, it's usually um, grape juice is the first ingredient, or it's enhanced. If they say pomegranate juice enhanced, that means it's really just going to be another juice 
with apple juice, uh, some great. apple and all. We didn't even talk about apples. Oh, oh goodness. So apple. many things. So apples, just real apple. quick, everybody. Apples, uh, the number one importing uh, country is from China. And most of the apples are heavily sprayed. So when we saw in the last four years, this huge surge of apple foods, right? Like now new different type of apple juices, apple cups um, for children, uh, even for the adults, the hard cider. I mean, there was literally- hard Cider became huge. huge. Like a half a dozen companies overnight. It's like hard cider, hard cider, hard cider, hard cider. Like where, where are those apple, you know, alcoholic apple drinks are coming? Because it's all cheap apples being grown in China full yeah. of pesticides. So if you are going to drink an apple cider or an apple juice or have apple sauce or a hard cider, make sure it is organic and try to avoid uh, the country of origin coming from China because it's just, it's the largest exporter of um, non-organic, heavily sprayed apples. And, and fraud wine. There's a lot of fraud wine. Fraud and wine. Now, the, like all of the wine from California, it's all GMO. So unless you're getting organic wines, you're just getting concentrated GMO. It's shown to have high glyphosate and in the Napa Valley wines, unfortunately. And 5% of the wines now in the United States, there's about $250 million of loss in U.S. businesses, was fake wines. Now, a lot of people buy cheap wines. They go to like the, these the, uh, you know, inexpensive grocery markets and get the $2, $3 wine. Do not do that. That's a whole industry. That's a whole book of discovery of understanding why, how can you make a wine for like two bucks? Again, it's just like the essential oil. The cost will come down to like, you know, 25 cents or so. And the rest, it's just, you know, you don't want to know what's, there's even animal parts and the wine, the rats. And the, I mean, you just believe because it's a mass production when they're making billions of bottles of this $2, $3 wines. It's not all in bottles either. It's yeah. in cardboard and plastic bags. <laughs> oh. You know, so anyways, not that we're encouraging people to drink wine, but when you do drink something, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be cheap. It shouldn't be heavily sprayed with glyphosate, pesticides, herbicides. Uh, it's not the alcohol that's going to probably get you. It's going to be all the chemicals and things that are added to that. To right. make well, it people think that they're healthy. They're, they're getting their resveratrol every evening. Oh. Oh, you can't really get, you know, there's not much. <laughs> you can't you know, drink enough wine to get your results. Yeah, I think there's a couple of cases that you have to drink to get even <laughs> somewhat of a clinical benefit. And I think uh, I was at a conference many years ago and they, and they actually had a wine and cheese reception. And then, you know, it was a it was big discussion there. And it was sponsored by a, a winery, but they had mentioned they had to make the disclaimer because there's a CME um, reception as well, because there was actually a lecture. They had to say that in order for them to make the claim, you'd have to drink so many um, cases of wine to get that benefit. So it's very interesting because everybody says, I'm drinking my, my glass of wine at night for my reservatol, but I'm like, no, you're not really getting much of that at all. And Ula wanted us to mention the nitrates in meat, like hot dog weenies, et cetera. Oh, we didn't talk about, you know, maybe should we have a should we have a food part three? <laughs> we could go on and on, and then people will just get paranoid. I, I'm not sure we should. Well, maybe we'll do a food three coming in the future, just like a, <laughs> like a trilogy. But yes, hot dogs. So just remember, I, it's in my book. So those people who got my book, if not, get my book at inflammationnation.com. But um, it's called the hot dog report. If you're interested, just Google the hot dog report. It came out about two years ago, and they took uh, a look at all the chemicals and preservatives. Um, Oh, here, let me see that. Let me show everybody. Here, here you go, everybody. And inflammationnation.com. Take a look at that. Go to, go to Amazon or go to, our web, go to our website, and I will, I will sign a personalized copy to you. Look at the U.S. burning. Yeah, this is a little bit weird because this is what's happening right now. You know, I couldn't have picked a better um, cover, even emotionally, politically, and spiritually, and environmentally what's happening. But uh, going back to the um, hot dogs. So not only do they have nitrates, nitrates are cancer causing, okay, uh, that we know. And also taking the animal protein that's even nitrate free, right? Uh, when you cook the animal protein, you still create heterocyclic amines, which are still car carcinogenic. So the nitrates in that was worse, but even those people like Dr. Pye, I'm eating my nitrate free bacon. It's like, it's still pro carcinogenic and has no fiber, no phytonutrients, no, no antioxidants, it's pro-inflammatory and has cholesterol. So... And, you know, 
earlier today we were talking about soy and uh, it, it's a big controversial subject but everybody's worried if you eat soy you know men will get man boobs and that's not where men get man boobs from <laughs> they actually get it when they're at the ballpark uh, and they're drinking lots of beer because hops hops actually stimulates the estrogen receptor that actually grows the estrogen effect uh, the soy actually has uh, the it, it binds to the other receptor the uh, at a 70 to 30 time more affinity and actually has the preventative benefit. That's why I can go to the, the, the ballpark and say none of these men who have man boobs are actually eating soy products, uh, no, but they're drinking beer, no. unfortunately. Right. Now, going back to the hot dog, which they're eating at the game in the ballpark, is that one of the most disturbing aspects of all the hot dog. Oh, this is very not, disturbing. Listen so, closely. So, so, so not only was there, you know, they, they say, you know, is this rabbi approved or kosher? No, most of those things that had the kosher or rabbi, you know, approved actually had cross-contamination. So those people, for religious reasons, don't want to have, say, pork or religious reasons don't want to have this or that. Unfortunately, you remember, all this stuff goes through processing plants and there's contamination. So there's no, like, 100% pure, you know, kosher or pure this approved or halal or whatever you want to talk about. Um, those aspects, but the most, and even in the vegetarian dogs, okay, there was still animal protein in the veggie dogs, because again, it's got to go through processing facility to make a hot dog. Uh, so even if they're not using the parts of the animal, all the parts of the animal, they're still got to, it's got to go to the hot dog factory to produce it. But the most disturbing out of all the study was that all the, they, they went to, um, I think it was like 18 different vendors, meaning all the grocery markets in America. And they took all the different brands and they, you know, this big comprehensive report on like 30 different types of brands, which you commonly would get that I would commonly get when I used to eat animal protein way back when. And it showed that there was human DNA in 2% of all the hot dogs, 2% human DNA in all the hot dogs across. All the hot dogs, all the hot dogs contained Two percent of human DNA. So, so that's not. So, when we say two percent, two percent is actually an ingredient that you have to list on a label. So, so it's not just like a finger or a little list or some. No, like two percent is significant enough that you have to put like here's your product, and you have like spices and salt and all. That's like two percent. They're usually putting the small little additive. So it has when, the weight to it. Yeah, it has a weight to it. So two percent is quite a lot. So when you think of human DNA. No food that anybody eats, regardless of plant or animal, should have human DNA in it, okay? Mm -hmm. We've now crossed over the threshold of, um, what's that movie? I don't know. Soylent Green. Oh, Soylent Green. Oh, okay. yeah, right. Uh, and so, ah. so, so, so we have now crossed. Like fall in the in the processing machine or something? Oh, oh, how would no, you they were taking the, the they were taking the movie was from the sixties with Charlton Heston where they I were taking that. like the homeless people and all and they were making them into food and selling it as Soylent Green, right? So it was you know. All right, this is getting creepy. Anyways, it's so but, but but it's weird. So if people are like, hey, I'm having a hot dog. I'm like, you know, and the, and the scariest thing, even with this information out there, a new study came out that 43% of Americans do not want to know what's in their hot dog. But okay? they still eat it. But they still eat it, right? Yeah. So what does that tell us now? There's just like, there's kind of like, I don't want to know. But then they cry foul when I'm fat, I'm sick, I'm nearly dead, my health insurance, my, my bills, I got cancer, my prostate, my breast, my brain, my this, my joints. What's wrong? It's like you should be well aware. You should know what's – you want to know where your shoes are made. You want to know where your car is made. You want to know where your iPhone is made. You want to know your – Detail about it. Everybody's looking at where my clothes is being made. So why wouldn't you want to know all what's happening with what are you putting in the most important vessel that you have, your body? Right. Your right? temple. The temple. Your body's your temple or your mosque or your, or your, or your, or your teepee or your hut or your, or your temple. You got to treat it the way you want to, but you just can't say with ignorance, I don't want to know because then you're just going to be a victim of fault of what the industry is now serving you on the other end, high health care bills, drugs, uh, medicines, procedures, treatments, unfortunately, are coming worldwide due to the food deception. And you know that commercial where uh, the guy's at the ballpark and his uh, hot dog or whatever it is slaps him in the face. Now we know why. It's trying to wake him up. 
don't eat that stuff. <laughs> your food should never be – the chicken wing and the pizza should not be fighting you in the parking lot. Uh, if your food is beating you up, uh, that's not a good sign. <laughs> Change your diet. You know, and th- those type of commercials don't really play uh, in other countries because they don't understand that concept of you know, fighting with your food. <laughs> the food is really enjoyable. It's nourishing. It makes people feel healthy, light. Uh, enjoyable. Here we have the post post meal coma, as we call it. We go home, unbutton our pants, when we pass out on the on the, on the lazy boy watching the game and uh, or the news. And uh, we thought that that was a healthy meal. Now we understand that's actually a, a coma like state due to the the gut microbiome inflammatory dysfunction. Serious stuff. All right. So not to make this such a downer because we want everybody to have a good dinner today, a good lunch, eat healthy food. Look at this wonderful picture behind us. For those people who are watching at home. Uh, or on this Facebook. is the kind of food you should be eating every day. Fresh foods, rainbow colored food, antioxidants, phytonutrients, fiber. Go back and listen to the update on plant-based diet or the anti-inflammatory diet a few episodes. If you missed that, the data is amazing and will shock you on how just small little changes have profound, 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 significant health benefits. Food should be your medicine. All right, everybody. And it shouldn't be deceptive. So try to find a farmer, try to go to local co-op. You know, there's now even delivery companies that can deliver. Uh, Try to still lower your carbon footprint if you do that. But again, as much as you can eat plant-based, organic, non-GMO, whole food, plant-based diet, number one. And then, again, we want to thank our sponsors, uh, Glucan 300. Go to purebetaglucan.com. Also, Fivita. You can look at the best quality CBD products. We have that available on our website as well. And Bosmeric um, for your anti-inflammatory support. Until next time, everybody, thank you for joining us. Please share this video with all your family and friends. And let's get more and more people educated and empowered to take back your health.